Here's five things I don't do when playing with my kids and why I don't do them. I'm a child therapist and I help families connect and communicate. The first thing I don't do is ask questions when playing with my kids. This will often pull them out of their play and it focuses on helping calm my uncertainties about what I should be doing. And it often feels like they're being quizzed on what they should be knowing. The biggest one I see other parents do, it's like, oh, what color is this car? What what sound does a cow make? And it's like, that's like putting like this like pressure to like perform and like understand instead of like having a cow be a car. It's like they can have this freedom to uh, explore their limitations and boundaries and create things that, you know, a, a grown up wouldn't even think to think about. And like in doing that is an excellent way for kids to understand their world and solve problems in very creative ways and understand what's going on in their lives. If they have me playing a role and I absolutely need to know what I'm supposed to be doing, I use the whisper method. Like, what am I supposed to be doing? And it works every time, but it, it doesn't like kind of break like the immersion, so to speak. Another thing I don't do is command or demand. This significantly raises the tension in their play and it often leads to conflict. If I can, I try and ignore or distract or redirect any unwanted behaviors. If they're be, being too unsafe or being too aggressive, uh, either remove the toy or simply end the playtime. Like my, my son was like hitting me on the leg with like some Legos and like a command would be like, don't do that, stop doing that. And whereas like not, not commanding, like setting boundaries, setting limits would be like, you know, you want my attention or like, you want me, you want me to be mad. So I was like, but I'm not for hitting. Like if you choose to keep hitting me, like we're gonna be done playing with Legos. The third thing I don't do is criticize. This will lead down this negative spiral and it's difficult to get out of it. And it decreases the shared joy in our play. My most valuable resource is my attention. So if I focus on the negative behaviors, my kids will know to use them to get my attention. You know, it's very easy to like not say like not bad things, but also saying like evaluating them as like good. Cause like, if you have the power to judge their, their artwork as good, like then you have the power to judge it as bad too. So like if you, especially if you're working with like a people pleasing kid, like they'll start to like make things that you like instead of doing something that pleases themselves. So really just praising them for the process that they're doing, the, the work that they're doing and reflecting how, how happy it makes them, helping them to be their own internal source of support. And the fourth is using sarcasm or mockery. So putting them down for their mistakes or being silly or you know wild or out of control, uh, it really can stifle their spirit and hurt their feelings. I mean, being in their world and following their lead, they have very, very, very little time where they feel in control. There's always somebody telling them what to do, where to go, how to act, how to respond. It's like, and this can be this very short time where they're in charge, where they can express what's what's going on and they feel this sense of control and mastery of, over their lives. And this is the way that they're able to grow and develop into, into who they are. And so it, it ultimately it shows this respect for them as kids. I mean, and the fifth is allowing distractions to enter our play. This is a screen-free time where we can simply enjoy our relationships for the very small window of time that we have together. And that pulls itself like away from, uh, you know, the, the relationship. It's just going to kind of dilute things at the moment. It, it, it breaks the immersion. And so like really having those firm boundaries just really helps enhance you know, the very short time that you have with your kids. I always make it a point to have 15 minutes of play a day. Really what kicked this all off was, um, I asked the kids that I work with like seven questions. And there was one question that really stood out to me, which how do they feel loved by their parents? And like, I'd always thought it was gonna be like some big like vacation or like a big toy, like just something big. But like 95 out of a hundred of them, it, they said, they feel loved by their parents when they play with them when they color with them when they draw with them and it's like that's how they feel safe and connected and doing those small things often it makes a world of difference